With the addition of Kyrie Irving, the Dallas Mavs were supposed to be true contenders in what was a competitive Western Conference. However, the season turned into a nightmare before our very eyes. The Mavs were just 9-16 since the trade, had a bottom 5 defense in that span, and didn't even make the play-in tournament. And with Kyrie hitting free agency, there were major questions not only for the overall state of the Mavs, but for Luka Doncic's happiness in Dallas long term. But with Kyrie re-signing and with the Mavs getting other notable pieces, it's clear and obvious that the Mavs are going to be serious threats to win the title in 2024. But before we get to that, be sure to leave a like on the video as each like makes a tremendous difference for the channel and be sure to sub to the channel for even more content like this. Given the poorest defense and lack of overall success, people really glossed over something really important for the Dallas Mavs. And that's the fact that they had an explosive offense with Kyrie and Luka in the backcourt. In Dallas, Kyrie averaged 27, 6, and 5, a shooting 51% from the field and 39% from three. And Luka averaged 32, 8, and 8 since the day of the trade. When those two shared the floor together, the Mavs actually had the best offensive rating in the entire league, were the best three-point shooting team in the entire league, and were actually bottom 10 in turnovers committed. We always talk about Kyrie being the best ball handler to ever grace an NBA court, and even rave about his crafty finishes time and time again. But the thing is, we always gloss over the fact that he's one of the best off-ball talents that we have in our game. And it's his off-ball scoring ability and ability to space the floor that makes the Mavs offense so difficult to tame. It's difficult for practically any defense to try to slow down or key in on Luka Doncic. And when you have a player that can dominate at the perimeter even without touching the ball, you're practically in a pick your poison situation. Moreover, not only will the Mavs have their star duo back next season, but they'll also have bolstered shooting with the return of Seth Curry. Seth has been a lights out shooter throughout his entire time in the league shooting 44% from three in his career, and is an ideal off-ball presence you want surrounding Luka and Kyrie. He's great moving off the ball and relocates for easy kickout opportunities, he has range, he can pull up in transition, and he can catch fire at a moment's notice. Funny enough, we've already seen the Luka-Seth partnership work in the past, given that Seth was on the Mavs for the 2020 season before he was dealt for Josh Richardson. That season, he shot 50% from the field, 45% from three on five attempts a game, and shot 48% from three in their six-game series against the LA Clippers. Seth is a huge get for the Mavs, but he doesn't help their poorest defense from last season, and the loss of Dorian Finney-Smith still looms large on this team due to lack of wing depth. However, the Mavs actually bolstered their defense in this NBA draft, selecting both Olivier Maxence Prosper and Derek Lively II. Prosper is a 6'8 wing with a 7'1 wingspan that just came off a second solid season for Marquette and greatly impressed in the NBA combine, scoring 21 points and collecting 7 rebounds in just 22 minutes of play. With his length, mobility, ability to navigate screens, and ability to hang with guards at the perimeter, Prosper projects to have versatility defensively right out the jump. And given his ability to attack the basket and finish well at the rim, he could benefit from cutting opportunities in this Mavs offense or flat out attacking the basket on closeouts and getting into the paint. He will need to improve his ball handling and outside stroke, but the Mavs are bringing him in for the immediate future to bolster their defense, with them already having sufficient ball handling and outside shooting. Next up is Duke's Derek Lively, the second. 
who isn't a floor spacer, but he's an athletic big that's 7-1 and can definitely be utilized well in the pick and roll. More importantly, he utilizes his 7-7 wingspan to alter shots at the rim, averaging a grade 2.4 blocks last season while making the ACC all-defensive team. The Mavs most definitely need interior defensive presence and Lively presents them with a player who can fulfill that role. Another reason why I'm confident the Mavs will improve defensively is the steady improvement of Josh Green. Green impressed during his three seasons in the league, and as athletic 6'6'4 with a 6'10 wingspan, he really does a little bit of everything on both ends of the floor. Defensively, he has great ball skills, good recovery, and a good anticipation as a wing defender that can also guard primary ball handlers and can even pick up full court. Offensively, I think Green is highly underrated as well, as he's very effective at attacking closeouts and is capable finisher at the rim. He always makes the extra pass to create better looks for his teammates, and just like Seth, he's capable of relocating on the floor and being a threat from the outside. That ability to hit outside shots is astonishing for him, given as three-pointer was practically non-existent in the 2022 NBA playoffs. But now, he's gone to shoot 40% from three this past season. I completely expect him to do big things in 2024, and I share that sentiment with Jaden Hardy. Hardy was just a second round pick at G League Ignite, but he quickly showed in practices, the preseason, and the regular season that he could be one of the steals of the 2022 NBA Draft. In games in which he played 20 minutes or more this past season, he averaged 19 points, 3 assists, shot 46% from the field, and 42% from 3. I expect even more minutes for Hardy as a backup this upcoming season, and while he does need to work on his decision making and finishing, he's just 20 years of age, he's a hard worker, and he's someone who can contribute right now. On draft night, the Mavs were able to keep their pick at number 10, but actually traded back when they selected Derek Lively at 12. And in the process, they got Rashawn Holmes from the Sacramento Kings to save salary from the Bertans deal. This move does improve the Mavs front court depth in the grand scheme of things, as Holmes was a guy that averaged 13 and 8 from 2020 to 2022, but given his shortcomings defensively, he might not favor in Jason Kidd's plans. Overall, the Dallas Mavs do have a formula for success to be serious title contenders in 2024, and there's no reason they can't replicate their magic from the 2022 NBA playoffs. They still have a top 5 player in the league in Luka Doncic, who's an all-time great playoff performer by the way. He and Luka form one of the scariest duos in the entire league. The offense and defense should improve with new personnel and a full training camp with Kyrie. And just two seasons ago, Jason Kidd proved to be one of the better coaches in the entire league. The real question at this point is whether they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the reigning champs in the Denver Nuggets and the new look versions of formidable Western Conference contenders. With that being said, comment down below your thoughts on Dallas Masses' upcoming season. Let me know where you rank them among title contenders. Also, let me know how successful you think the partnership of Luka and Kyrie will be next season, and who among the Mavs' younger players will step up big time next season. Be sure to leave a like on the video as each like makes a tremendous difference for the channel, and be sure to sub to the channel for more content like this. Hope to see you all in the next one, and stay tuned.